Okay, quick warning. Today, I'm going to be talking about face masks. If you're sick of hearing about masks, don't believe in masks. Mask makes you irrationally angry, or you want to give me a hard time in the comment section for being Chinese and therefore being personally responsible for masks. Please just go watch another one of my videos. I don't need the hassles, and there is no reason for you to hate watch this video when there is much more relaxing stuff on my channel. Okay, with that out of the way, today I'm going to build the Razor Sapphire. It's being marketed as an air purifying mask with N95 grade filters by Razor, a company better known for its gaming components and accessories. As most of you know, I've been advocating for masks since the first days of the pandemic. This has caused me a lot of followers because not everyone agrees with this position. But I have to follow my conscience and convey the best science I can from the experts I have access to. So let me show you the sapphire, try it on, and then I'll walk you through my thoughts on it. All right. This US cable is nice. With this little plug, I get when you put it in your bag, it keeps the dust out. And this is their instruction. This looks nice. Okay, it has this filter with the magnetic on, it just pop right on like this. And this is the filter. And this is the anti fog spray. I guess so it doesn't get fog up inside. Okay, let me take the plastic off first. And then let me put the filter on. Okay, I've already downloaded the app. Let me connect it to the phone. Let's pair it with our Razer Sapphire. Battery level alert. Yes, activate notification. Okay, we are connected. It shows us the fan speed, internal lighting and external lighting. Let's go into the fan speed. It has high and low. I want it to uh, run high, so. Okay, internal lighting, you're not going to be able to see it here, so I'm going in the external lighting setting. Okay, this is wave. This effect uses built-in color settings. And let's go to static. You can change any color and it will sync to the mask. Let's see green. Okay, you see, it changed to green. And let's go to yellow. It takes a minute and then it changes it. And down here, there is the brightness for you to choose. You can choose it 
to 100, select it to 100%. And then let's go to Spectrum. Spectrum which shows you uh, the spectrum of colors. Okay, let me try it on. Okay, it's pretty comfortable, the feet is good, but it's pretty hard to breathe. Okay, so before I could do this, a little background. For the purposes of reducing the airborne spread of inf infection, we are going to be talking about a few mask types. The first is cloth masks, then surgical masks, well-fitted N95 masks, half-face elastomeric masks, full-face elastomeric masks, and peppers or powered air purifying respirators. In the early days of the pandemic, I made one of the first prototype peppers using a decathlon diving mask and this small power air filter. This would be what is known as a tie-fitting pepper by the United States National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, or NIOSH, because it has a sealed, full-face elastomeric mask. The minimum airflow by NIOSH standards for a tie-fitting pepper is 150 liters per minute. Now, if you are small like me, you need much less than that. So my little power filter worked fine for me. Other people continue to work on DIY peppers and as you see, the fans get quite large because with a tight fitting pepper, you need 150 liters per minute of air and with a loose fitting pepper like this. You needed a minimum of 170 liters of air per minute by NIOSH standards because you need enough positive pressure air coming out of the hood to keep air from coming in when you inhale. That said, loose fitting peppers are by far the most comfortable kind of mask or respirator to wear for any amount of time, as well as the safest. I use this one for painting and other jobs with nasty films and it's just great. Of course, the obvious problem is it looks ridiculous outside of a hospital intensive care unit and when turned on, it's quite noisy and cumbersome. Whew. Now, most models don't offer source control, which means they don't filter exhalations. The small filter box I used with the DIY pepper comes with its own mask, which I revealed in my last video on masks. I actually used it for running errands in the early days of the pandemic and it gave a nice flow of fresh air. It's not a full blown pepper, but more of an assist and much more comfortable than just a face mask alone. But you are still left with disposable masks and fitting issues, which of course is the problem with disposable N95 masks, fit, cost, and waste. That's why recently there's been a push for hospital staff and other at-risk individuals to move to half-face elastomeric masks like this. Shout out to my buddies in the clean air crew on Twitter. They do a ton of advocacy around this and other really effective mitigation measures like filter boxes. I'll put the link in the description. Elastomeric masks are something I was pushing for back in April 2020, when regular N95 masks were in short supply and people were trying to 3D print them. Spoiler, 3D printing masks were and are a terrible idea. The data on elastomeric masks, however, has always been quite good. Again, see citations for all of the information given in this video in the description box. Originally, there was concern about the check valves 
on this mask. The check valve is this part here. It lets you breathe out easily, but closes so you can only pull air in through the filters. While the inhalation is filtered, the exhalation is not. They did not offer what's known as source control. It was thought they only protected the wearer. So the device was to disable the check valve. You can follow the link to the video where I test that. Since then, the recommendations for elastomeric masks has been updated. It seems there is much less risk from the valve than originally thought. Although ideally, most people will buy one of the more recent models of masks introduced in, in the last year that have no check valve, disabled it, or fit it with an adapter that filters the exhalation. Let me show you how that works. Okay, so I have this little plastic valve here, no filtration. So I've 3D print um, this little adapter. And then I put this on. Now I have source control. I can breathe in through here and exhale through here. So a compromise between full bone pepper and an elastomeric mask, sort of an assisted respirator, is a really good direction for a lot of reasons. It's more comfortable, it's more environmentally friendly, it provides a higher level of protection than most face masks, and since it's not disposable, you can make it stylish enough people actually want to wear it. There have been a few attempts at that here. Here's another one. And another one. And this one. Obviously, those aren't very good or very practical, but it's still a good idea, and getting it right is exactly what the Zephyr aims to do. The product concept is definitely sound and Razor should be congratulated for being willing to take a chance and step up, innovate, and try to make a product that truly serves the public good. And it very clearly is a Razor product, style cues, RGB lights and all. Unfortunately, that's the problem as well. It was not designed by people who knew very much about masks or wearables or biomedical engineering. It's clearly designed and engineered like a computer peripheral. So let's see what that means. The first problem is the silicon face gasket. While this unit may be defective, the fact that it can fall off so easily is a big problem. This means there is nothing forming an airtight seal. And an airtight seal is the whole point. Yes, it lets you take it off to clean it, but the little magnets just aren't strong enough to hold it in place compared to these designs. See, those gaskets aren't going any place. I could see making this gasket removable this way if it's snapped in tighter and come in three sizes like most professional respirators, but it doesn't. Just one size and it comes off way too easily. And if the mask doesn't fit you, you're out of luck unless you can find someone who wants your slightly used mask, which is a little gross. The mask itself is obviously not NIOSH approved and would never get NIOSH approval with a problem like that or the other ones we'll go into, which gets us to the N95 gray filters. As you can see, it's this tiny little disc of filter material, and it very cleverly gets held in place under this magnetic cover. But I'm really not happy about this N95 grade business. It's just deceptive marketing. N95 is a certification for an entire mask, not a part of a mask. The whole mask either has been tested to provide a certain degree of protection or it hasn't. 
If you want to say an FFP2 is N95 equivalent, sure, I can accept that. They have a very good certification process also, but this is not that. It has not passed any certification for feet or filtration. Lots of non-N95 masks use the same filter material that N95 masks use. That does not mean they offer N95 protection because they haven't been tested. I can tuck N95 filter material in a cloth mask. That does not suddenly make a cloth mask N95 or anything close to it. Just a bit better than plain cloth. Without a NIOSH certification, the mask can never and should never have N95 anything written anywhere on the packaging or marketing material. It's dishonest and frankly dangerous to rep represent personal protective equipment during a global pandemic simply for the sake of marketing. Next, there is an exhalation port, but there is no check valve on it. It's just this port in the front that both inhalation and exhalation can pass through. It comes with this very small piece of filter material that covers the port, but since it has less surface area than the side filters, it offers greater resistance and you will end up primarily inhaling and exhaling through the side ports, which defeats the purpose of having an exhalation port at all. Only benefit I can see is that the lack of a check valve seems to make speaking a bit easier to understand. Normally, I suggest masks with speaking diaphragms for this, but the fact that elastomeric masks are hard to speak through is a big issue. If people have to take them off to say something, it defeats the purpose. Here's a comparison of speaking with different masks on. This is the 3M6100 with no diaphragm. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is the Shigamishu with a speaking diaphragm. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is the Razor Sapphire. Test, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Obviously, once you have electronics in the mask, you can start thinking about adding pass-through speakers and such, but you'll have to get the basics taken care of first. Overall, all the three filters combined still have a tiny surface area compared to a standard respirator or elastomeric mask. This is the size of the Cephia filters. This is the size of standard elastomeric mask filters. This huge one is one of my favorites, very easy to breathe through. By comparison, the Cephia is like breathing through a straw, which is our final and most severe problem. The massive amount of resistance to both exhaling and inhaling because of the small filter area. Aha, but wait, but what about the fans? Well, there's the problem. As implemented, they're completely useless. And here's why. A while back, I was working on this exact problem. A power-assisted elastomeric mask, my approach was a bit different. Instead of taking one part of a certified respirator, the filter paper, and adding it to a questionable powered mask, I started with a certified mask and certified filter cartridges. Then between the two, I added a compact power boot section. Here, let me show you. I'm starting with my Sugamisu mask. It's my favorite mask brand. They are stylish and offer great protection, although they can be a little hard to source. This one is the TWOASF. It comes in three sizes and has a speaking diaphragm. I 3D printed adapters so I can use it for standard 3M bayonet fittings. I also have the option of filtering the exhalation mouth for source control with this 3D printed adapter which gets a little ridiculous, but it's good to have the option. While the large surface area makes it pretty comfortable, I think 12 hours would be a little rough without some help. So let's add some help. Okay, I just whipped this up in Tinkercad. Very simple model. 
I'm testing the FlashWatch Creator 3 Pro at the moment. It's an IDEX printer, so I can use duplicate mode to have each head print one filter at the same time. This cuts print time in half. I have a full review of the FlashWatch Creator 3 Pro coming up soon, but so far I really like it. The electronics are just a LiPo battery, a power switch, a plug for recharging, and a fan. This is just a prototype to test a theory. No need for fancy power management or anything like that. Like Wazer, I'm using Axial fans. Mine are nice, powerful, quiet, Noctua fans. Really the best fans money can buy. I put them on my 3D printers and they run whisper quiet. <laughs> Okay, I put it all together and nothing. Well, almost nothing. Maybe the slightest breeze. But why? Fans blow air, right? I've got fans. Where's my air flow? So what happened? As it turns out, all peppers use what's known as a centrifugal fan and the reason for this is simple. Even though an axial fan can deliver a greater volume of air for the same size, it does so at lower pressure. Ever seen the fan they use to keep bouncy castles inflated? Hint. Those aren't axial fans or the kids would go splat on the concrete. There just would not be enough pressure to keep the structure firm and inflated. They use centrifugal fans. Likewise, in a pepper, an axial fan can overcome the resistance of the filter material to pull air through it. There is no difference in ease of breathing with or without the fans on when you wear this or the sapphire. The axial fans simply don't have the static pressure to do anything, particularly not through these tiny filters with high resistance. So in the next test, I'm swapping out the little 40 by 40 axial fans with centrifugal fans the same size. I have to make the enclosure a little thicker, but it's a prototype and I can slim it down later if I want to refine it a bit by moving stuff around. Now this, I can feel some help. It's really a bit easier breathing. Is it as good as a real pepper? No, but the air feels cooler, fresher, and it's definitely easier breathing than an elastomeric mask long with no power boost. It's not too heavy and the battery should last about four hours, at which point I can just swap them for another pair and recharge those. Of course, this is bulky. 
ugly demonstration that I just whip up in my home shop and it's not commercially viable. It's certainly not as beautiful as the Sapphire, but it shows that the key is to use that the right size filters. The right kind of fan, the what volume and pressure you need that fan to produce, and how many liters per minute you are actually getting through your filters. If you've been watching the Razer marketing campaign for this product, the first hint that the engineering really wasn't all there is the list of revolutions per minute of the fans. Those numbers are meaningless here. It doesn't tell us the actual air volume they are capable of delivering or even the fan noise, which by the way is quite reasonable. about 50 decibels at 15 centimeters. Good job there. So the long and the short of it is, the sapphire is fixable. Razer should keep trying. It's a good idea. My concern is if they have the right professionals working on this in the first place, people with a biomedical engineering background and relevant experience, none of these problems would have made it into production. I don't publish my designs for this mass staff because I don't think people should put their safety in the hands of someone like me with no medical training or relevant engineering experience. Likewise, I don't think Razer should be selling a product that all disclaimers aside, in reality will be used for medical purpose without appropriate professional involved in that process. The Sapphire was clearly designed by computer people using the same parts they use for computers and accessories. Without even a passing familiarity with what goes into making an elastomeric mask or pepper, and that's just not responsible. Final verdict. Making an N95 mask is relatively easy. It's legacy engineering. Dozens of companies do it. But as we've found out the past two years, making an N95 mask that people actually want to wear is very, very hard. That's art. Razer did a hard job well and made a mask people want to wear, but failed at the easier job in getting the engineering done right. The Sapphire is a great idea with poor execution. It fits well, it's fashionable, it's cool. The problems with its functionality are all fixable. I find it too difficult to breathe in to suggest actually wearing it as a mask and I would not be comfortable assigning it a higher level of protection than say, a cloth mask. That said, I really hope Razer immediately begins working on fixing these issues and gives us a version 2 Sapphire that really works. Last, many thanks to Razer for sending me this review unit when they absolutely knew I was bringing the hammer. So many companies are thin skins these days and can't accept anything but fake growing reviews from corroborative influencers. Razer genuinely wanted real feedback and wanted to make a good product, not just sell what they already made like other companies I've dealt with. It really speaks well of Razer that they were willing to do that and that they were willing to take a chance on such an innovative product that really can serve the public good once the issues are addressed. That's it for today. Please repost my videos any place online you'd like to spend time. It really helps. Until next time, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Well, except those guys at Razer. They clearly could not. I kid, I kid.